admit, one thing that I found a little disappointing with the uh, 2019-2020 Arrowverse event, Crisis on Infinite Earths, is that they didn't provide a shot or a reference to iZombie. Now, on the face of it, I can see, can see why. I mean, iZombie wasn't exactly a superhero show, but I feel that with it being based on a... DC Vertigo comic, they could have slotted a shot in of Rose McIver and Robert Buckley with the red skies, and it still would have worked. But, anyway, the next one off my 2021 watch list is the second season of iZombie. Now, iZombie was another show that I did show interest in a couple of years ago. I, hell, I think for my birthday, 2017, I actually got the first season of it. I had a family member who actually really enjoyed the show and knew it before I did, so it's great to have something to watch with them. But... I finished season one, I was really enjoying the show, but then kind of life got in the way, and I ended up kind of not getting back to it for a long time. But, finally got season two, sat down and watched it, and once again, I really enjoy this show, and I do think it's a good one. So, for those who've somehow never seen the show, didn't see my last review of it, which would have been for a couple of years ago, here's the thing. In this particular of world or continuity, there's a new drug that has hit the streets, and it's called Utopian. And while Utopian on its own is very much like other kind of street drugs, when mixed with a new energy drink that hit the street from Max Rager, it seems to create a zombie outbreak. Now, zombies in this world, if they go without brains for too long, then yeah, they become like every other zombie movie you've ever seen. Night of the Living Dead, 28 Days Later, World War Z, take your pick. However, if zombies can maintain a constant steady supply of brains, then they can retain relative normality. They can fit in with society. And we focus on a zombie called Olivia Moore, or Liv Moore, which, yeah, of course we get the reference. Played by Rose McIver. Now, she was a promising person. She was going into the medical field. She was doing well. And then one night, pushed by her friends, she went to a boat party. Where, of course, she got scratched and now become, becomes a zombie. It's, of course, based on a comic. But in order to go give herself constant supply of brains, she works at the Seattle Morgue. And the thing about the brains that she eats is that... Aside from helping her to retain normalcy, they also uh, give her flashes of... She assumes the personality of anyone whose brain that she eats, or assumes parts of their personality, and also sees flashes of their memories, which she uses with a detective named Clive Babineau, played by Malcolm Goodwin, in order to help solve homicides. Now, there are a few people in the show who do know her secrets, and in season two they do build up a few more. The one, of course, who was there from the start is her boss, Ravi Chakrabarti, played by her Rahul Kohli, who does seem on board with it, and it's legitimate fun. The, also now her boy, her ex-boyfriend, Major Lily White, played by Robert Buckley, knows. And you've got a lot more characters in the show that do help flesh things out. I mean, as I said, you've got Liv, you've got Ravi, Clive Major. You've also got Liv's best friend, Peyton Charles, played by Ali McCulker, who I think has somewhere in the, go in the governor's office, I can't exactly tell off the top of my head where she is. And you've also got the zombie who turned her, named Blaine De Beers McDonough, played by David Anders, who is actually the second one of his show I've ended up watching this year, the first being the second season of Once Upon a Time. But in this season they also introduce... Uh, a new kind of second hand for Blaine named Don E or Donald Eberhand, e Eberhard, played by Bryce Hodgson, who he provides a lot of fun. Now, season two does build a lot more on season one, and we do get a lot of good stuff out of it. I mean, for example, in order to save his life, Major has to briefly be turned into a zombie by Liv, and Liv several times, and bl before being cured, and Blaine is also briefly turned human. Which does allow for a lot of stuff. Now, while watching it with a family member who liked this show, they admitted they didn't entirely see why they kept Blaine around. It's like, except for one villain in season four, which I haven't got to yet, 
they pointed out that almost every single villain in the show is Blaine's fault. Like, he causes zombie outbreak. He, why do they keep him around? Personally, I think I see him in the same way that uh, John Barrowman's Malcolm Merlin or Wentworth Miller's Captain Cold in the Arrowverse, which is basically, yeah, we hate this guy, but he does occasionally provide useful information, and if he wasn't here, then we'd have a lot more problems. But Major briefly becomes a zombie. Blaine, for a large portion of this season, becomes human. There's also Major being recruited by Max Rager themselves and branded as the Chaos Killer. Now, Max Rager counselingly wants to avoid responsibility for the zombie outbreak. So their CEO, Vaughn de Clark, played by Stephen Webber, and his daughter, Rita, played by Leanne App, hire Major to essentially kill off any suspected zombies in the area, which they do by looking up certain purchases they made, such as fake tan, uh, hot sauce, you get the idea. However, he manages to briefly get away with it by actually essentially kidnapping each of the zombies and putting them in a freezer just so he doesn't have to kill them before staging a fake killing by dumping a body in the lake, a dummy in the lake. There's also a new character of Drake Holloway, played by Greg Finley, who I personally thought he was going to last a lot longer, judging by what I saw online, but apparently he starts off as someone who evidently has fingers in multiple pies. Like He's working with Blaine, but is also seemingly under the control of another big boss in the series, Stacey Boss, played by Eddie Jameson, who's kind of like a big kind of gangster. And he's also working for the police. And he does have a rather sweet relationship with Liz, with Liv. And, and once again, there's an FBI agent named Dale Bosio, played by Jessica Harmon, who has a rather sweet uh, relationship with Babano, which is nice. I do think this is a series that I, do, well, that I would like to continue with. And I do think it's good. The only two things, aside from the lack of a Crisis on Infinite Earths cameo later on, but that's later on, the only two things that I would say I were problems for me for this particular season of Vice Zombie were, I think on at least two occasions, there were two endings that I felt were a little rushed. One of them was at the end of the Zombie High episode, in that they appear to be searching for who they believe to be the murderer, then we suddenly switch to Blaine's story, and then suddenly they're questioning the ultimate killer. And I'm just thinking... You could have stuck another scene in there and just made it a bit more complete. And the other was with the coffee shop episode where, uh, towards the end, they st found the person who had ki who had loosened the air conditioner which had killed the person, and then it's revealed her daughter was actually the one who orchestrated everything, so it seems like they're going to go one way and then the other guy just admits everything. It's just like, this person did technically get away with murder. You're not going to go after her, even though it's clear she's involved with all this. It's just like... The other thing that I admit I do have a little bit of a problem with, not as much, is while there are deleted scenes on this DVD, of course, uh, those these deleted scenes from episode 13, I do feel like they could have kept them in, as I do feel they're very sweet. Essentially, at the start of this particular season... Liv refuses to give blood for to in order to save her brother, played by Nick Perker. And he ends up he ends up being saved anyway, but he then tells her to just go away, I don't want to see you. And in episode thirteen, he ends up coming back to her and they sort of briefly reconcile and she reveals to him that she's a zombie and he reveals to her that he's gay. Which I Watching the scenes through, I do actually think it's very sweet, and I do l love the familial connection they have. I feel they could have kept that in. I do see why they cut it. But once again, season two of iZombie, I do feel it's still a very good show, and I do hope to continue to watch it. But, yeah, I admit season two, I think, is a step up from season one, and I, I am glad I kept with the show. Anyway, then. The next set of reviews I'll probably be uh, setting up is another set of Doctor Who storylines from the classic era, starting off with a series of John Pertwee episodes. So, when I get there, I'll let you know. Until then, see ya.